Pierre Polyev stands up to reporters yet again and puts the final nail in any argument that would say Justin Trudeau has any form of a career left. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. Pierre Polyev has been on a hot streak lately. And of course, we've been covering all of his press conferences as of late, his uh, time in the House of Commons here on the channel. But one thing that's submersed and one thing that we've been talking about uh, all week long is, of course, the hot topic on everybody's plate these days, which is Alberta's decisions with Danielle Smith in order to protect children uh, by saying that you must be over the age of 18 before making any kind of rash decisions on what you're going to do with your body. Now, I did do a coverage video the other day stating that Pierre Polyev stood with Danielle Smith. He stood with Alberta. And a lot of people in those comments were saying, well, this is word salad because Pierre Polyev is doing what he typically does. He's uh, beating around the bush. He won't specifically say he agrees with it. He's hinting that he agrees with some aspects of it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to say today that while Pierre Polyev was having yet another press conference he's finally not only shut down media personnel again utterly humiliating them and embarrassing them on their tactics but also coming forward to state specifically to the word where he stands on um this kind of treatment for children and of course pierre coming out in favor of alberta and danielle smith which i couldn't be happier about uh but let's just get right into the the meat and potatoes of this uh, this press conference because boy, is it good. Let's, uh, I'm gonna play a clip and uh, then we'll discuss. Do you, support, do you support age restrictions for puberty blockers and hormone therapies for trans kids? Um, I think that uh, Justin Trudeau is trying to divide and distract Canadians by spreading disinformation about uh, the decisions that premiers and parents are making. I want to know you, I want what do you think? What do you think? I want to know your, your position. position. What is your own party policy? It's your own party policy. At party convention. I think we should protect the rights of parents to make their own decisions. What does it mean? With regards to their children. And I believe that adults should have the freedom to make any decision they want about their bodies. But minors but children have children have children children. Children. and medical interventions for minors as your own party members suggested. Medical interventions like what? That, that, it, that is the language that your party What medical used. interventions? Well, well you would have to ask your party members. What medical such interventions? As medical, such as puberty blockers and hormone replacement. For minors? Yeah. Yes. Irreversible? You're talking about irreversible? I want to ask you. Do you agree with puberty blockers for minors? Puberty blockers for minors? Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? I think that we should protect children and their ability to make adult decisions when they are adults. So you think only adults only adults should make oh you said yes just just to be clear you said yes only adults should take puberty blockers I think we should protect children let them make adult decisions when they become adults So that means you support age restrictions you are against puberty blockers for kids under the age of 18 is that is that unclear okay what about can I ask you about um uh in Alberta By the way I just want to make another comment on this Justin Trudeau is again puffing out his chest trying to divide Canadians and attack parents who are trying to protect their kids. He will, in the end, back down on this, just like he had to back down on his firearms policy, just like he had to back down on bringing in medical assistance and dying for people suffering from mental illness, just like he's backing down again and again and again. He will back down on this because he is not interested in protecting kids. He's interested in using this as a divisive wedge to distract from doubling housing costs and quadrupling carbon taxes on our people. But it's for Mr. you, for you, you're, 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 so you're against puberty blockers for kids under yes. the age of 18. Mr. Hey, Mr. What about opting yes, in? What about uh, parents in Alberta having to opt in for sex ed? Where do you for stand every on lesson, that? No, that's, that's, that's a decision for the province. No, but what do you think? What do you he also me that's a decision for the province. <laughs> He's, but he's taken his stance on where he fits into this equation. Now, while we're on the subject, I, it's interesting um, that the media is pushing so hard about these blockers for kids. Now, one thing that I've noticed here when I look at, uh, what is this, Provincial Health Services Authority from British Columbia, um, I wanted to read this one paragraph because it's very uh, fine-tuned to support the decisions being made for children to take these medications. But let's take a look at what's being said here. Puberty blockers are considered to be very safe overall. Now, here we go. 
We are not sure if puberty blockers have negative side effects on bone development and height. Research so far shows that the effects are minimum. However, now here's the here's the kicker. We won't know the long-term effects until the first people to take puberty blockers get older. Um, doesn't that sound like something familiar that the government wanted everybody to take a couple of years ago? And uh, they said, oh, it's it's this, it's that, and we're, we're guaranteeing. And then they come back and go, well, now we're not guaranteeing. Well, now there's studies. Well, now we have results. Um, this is experimental therapy that they're pushing onto children for the means of population control. Um, now, if we go back to further on, oh, I accidentally switched my camera back over. I apologize for that. If we go back to Pierre Polyev, uh, now I've said earlier in the video, he's shutting down reporters and putting the nail in Justin Trudeau's coffin. Again, I don't believe that Justin Trudeau has any hope of running ahead in the future, but hey, here, let's take a listen to what True North uh, is showing here because of course Anita Polyev <laughs> typing out this here's where it gets hot and spicy folks when we talk about the support of the Ukraine and, and their carbon policy uh, amendments and why the conservatives did not back uh, what went through but let's uh, let's take a listen then we're going to talk about that Ukraine free trade deal if you become prime minister well, we, we brought in the, the Ukraine free trade the deal. new one the new version there is no new one what there is is a, it was just passed no, no, if I could it, what there is is a carbon tax amendment you know what happened if this deal didn't pass nothing because we already have a free trade agreement what we have now is a carbon tax amendment to a pre-existing deal so what, so what would you do if you, if you become prime minister? We're not going to honor a carbon tax amendment. But your supporters we're, we're don't going like to, the carbon we're tax. Going to, Why don't they support Ukraine? They don't That's their question. Because they don't support the carbon tax. So you they think don't. that all of their support, their declining support for Ukraine is linked solely to the carbon, the carbon tax, tax, carbon tax in this free trade deal? The, the carbon tax was inserted by Justin Trudeau, not by my supporters. Why did he do that? No, but I'm just curious. Can you explain to me why there is a carbon tax in the agreement? No, but the question is why. No, no, I asked you a question. You, you keep you keep asking what the agreement. We're the journalists. Why do you, why do you, why do you, why do you ask the question? Yeah, I, I have the freedom to ask questions if I want to, and I've just answered. I've been answering your questions all, right, all week. Here's another one. So, no. Here we go. Pierre just shutting it down. No, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, this is again what he's doing here. Is if you if you look at the business world, even in in media. Uh, open and closed questions are used as entrapment in order to get somebody to uh, give a yes or no answer, in order to spin a narrative. Now, what Pierre has done and what he's a master of, what he has shown throughout uh, his time of being the leader of the Conservative Party, um, is that anytime he catches wind of them trying to use this tactic to spin their narrative, he's going to flip it back on them. And that's what he's done here. Well, let's continue with his answer. Why would they do a carbon tax? tax? We're, no, we're, you're not changing the subject. I know you want to change the subject because no, you don't want to talk I about Trudeau's carbon tax. You I want to ask a question because no. in a democracy, Sorry. we ask the question and you answer. I, and I'll, I decide the answer I give. And the yes, answer and the answer is this: We will axe the tax, and Trudeau can try to divide Canadians by putting a carbon tax and a free trade ag agreement that we already had for years. It won't change a thing. It's misleading because I will axe the tax. And I will axe the tax with delight and with passion and with incredible speed. So when I'm prime minister, you will be shocked at the speed with which I will axe the tax. And the Canadian people will be able to look up at the gas stations and see the prices coming down. And Trudeau can try to distract from his hated carbon tax by putting it in a free trade amendment to a pre-existing agreement. It won't stop me because I will ax the tax, I will ax the tax, and I will ax the tax. Thank you. <laughs> uh, mic drop, total mic drop there, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Pierre making it very apparent what he's doing. Um, and again, not only saying that he's going to ax the tax, and I've been very skeptical to say, well, is this just going to go away and come back in the form of something else? Uh, but but what he's basically stating there that he knows he's going to get even a majority government at this point um, because of claiming how quickly he is going to axe the tax. And again, these kind of promises will need to come to fruition if he doesn't want an angry mob uh, calling for his name on Parliament Hill. And, and, and again, I, I commend him for making these statements, but you'll forgive me if I say that I'm a little blown away. He would be so bold as to state 
how quickly he's going to get rid of it. And I can tell you right now, that is a breath of fresh air. It's uh, very humbling to see. Now, what any form of taxation turns into after that is yet to be discovered. But let me say this. If we're going to see a reduction in the prices of the pumps, if we're going to see the tax completely get axed, whether other taxes come that way, you have to remember that uh, food would be more affordable, gas would be more affordable, um, our lives would be more affordable, our utility bills would be more affordable, everything we do would be more affordable. Now, again, I'm not advocating for another tax, but what I'm saying is, is uh, it's going to be interesting as a former finance minister to see how Pierre makes up for all the ruthless spending that went on throughout pandemic measures um, or throughout the eight years of Justin Trudeau. Don't forget, Justin Trudeau has spent more and put us further into debt and deficit than all other prime ministers combined. So it's going to, again, be a rough couple of years, uh, but I welcome this man to be our next prime minister of Canada. I think that he's got the tools. I think that he's got the talent and uh, well, <laughs> time's going to tell when we're going to see an election. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know down below in the comments what you think. Did Pierre do enough to show Justin Trudeau's divisive tactics? Do you think uh, you think Trudeau's got any hopes left? I mean, I really don't think so. Aside from rigging an election, I don't see how Justin Trudeau is going to stay in power. And honestly, I'm not going to rule that out because we all know how dirty Justin Trudeau can get when it comes to hitting below the belt. But let me know your comments down below if it's your first time here. I hope this video has earned your subscription. Make sure as you're clicking that bar, hit the bell for notifications. Join us live this Friday for our new live streams Friday night fringe here on the channel. I'm looking forward to going over everything that happened this week, talking a little bit with the community, getting some back and forth, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there here on the channel at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central this upcoming Friday. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one.